On the left is the Amazon Kindle Scribe, and on the right is the Remarkable 2. Now you might be wondering why are we comparing these two? The Remarkable 2 came out over two and a half years ago, and this just came out. Well, it's mostly because Remarkable 2 has had the biggest advertisement campaign of any e-note in the world. They throw so much money at advertisement, it's unreal. So people can't stop searching for it and can't stop talking about it. Is it a good e-note? Yes, it is a good e-note. Is it a good e-paper tablet in the current landscape? No, it's definitely been left in the dust. But how does the Amazon compare against it? Because remember, this isn't a tablet powerhouse. This is a simple, large screen e-reader that just so happens to have a Wacom screen to take notes. You can use any pen on the market actually, in fact you can use the Amazon pen, the iReader pen, the Big Me pen, the Remarkable pen, the Onyx pen, the Boyu pen, the Mobiscribe pen, the list goes on. And because this is also Wacom, we're going to be using the same Amazon pen to keep it fair on both of these units. On the left and the right we'll be using the exact same pen. The pens are a little bit different in that this one has a button on the side the remarkable pens do not have a button on the side they do have an eraser on the back however that's kind of where it ends now they use the same tips use exact same tips so you don't have to worry about that there's going to be no real differences in that now do they both read books yes they actually do this is one time where we can actually show you guys ebooks side by side so we're going to open up an ebook on this and this now this has 226 ppi this has 300 ppi that's the biggest thing there has never been an e-note 10 inches or above with 300 ppi this is the first time this has ever happened the reading experience on the remarkable is okay but really what it is it's kind of like the quaderno and the sony where they just use the note taking kind of software and the same palette on the side so really this is simply just the note taking experience with most of the settings you have your colors you have your highlighter and they just kind of allow you to use an epub it's decent it turned pages okay i suppose and on the kindle you get an actual amazon kindle reading experience because this is an ebook reader in fact this is the kind of not spiritual successor of the DX in any way, but it is the large screen successor of the DX. And this is also the biggest Kindle ever made. The last one was the DX, which was 9.7. This is 10.2. So this actually eliminates any need for the DX. The DX has had this very strong following even to this day, but really this this puts it all to bed now you can highlight on both of these you can do some long presses things like that the remarkable doesn't allow you to long press because it just relies on you using these note taking kind of functions on the side if you do tap the middle nothing happens on the remarkable because everything's kind of ready for you here you have export you have layers you have this tag right here you can tag pages you can look at the overview of what all the pages are and on the Amazon you can do a lot of that to that extent as well you can go ahead and see what all the pages have to look at you can tap the top you have a lot more settings on this obviously it's an e-reader you can change the font you can change the boldness the font style you can change the layout the margins the orientation and you can go to more and you have a bunch of different things there you can watch the full review on both of these on our YouTube channel you can also click here and go into vocabulary builder which is kind of really cool because every time you long press or tap on something it actually builds your vocabulary and you can do stuff like flashcards and once you know what something is, you can mark it as mastered because you've mastered that word. It's a really cool kind of feature. The Remarkable doesn't really prioritize ebooks or PDFs in that regard. It really is just like we said, displaying them on a page rather than allowing you to interact with them and really change the experience to this degree. Now well, that's not really why you're here. You guys are here for the note taking section and that's the most important thing because the Amazon device has never had note taking. Amazon has never dabbled in note taking even to the degree that say Kobo does with the Sage when they entered that or even Pocketbook with their little scribble. This is the only device ever to do note taking and that's just really surprising now this is where 
is this just is not even close at this point. The Remarkable can do everything. And I'm talking about you got a lot of cool features here. Now, pitting this up against something like an Android tablet, like an Onyx or a Big Me or a Me Book or a High Read, the Remarkable falls short. But this is a rare occasion where the Remarkable actually stands out because you get a lot of different pens. You get ballpoint, fine liner, marker, pencil, and pencil. To this day, this is the only device that allows you to tilt and it recognizes tilt and it recognizes a very vast degree of pressure sensitivity to the point where you can do this little dusting around the page. It's quite spectacular. Not only that, it has inherent pressure sensitivity. So if you press hard, it'll be very hard. If you go to something like a paintbrush, this is very evident. Thick paintbrush in gray, for example, you draw lightly and it's going to be like that. If you draw heavily, it's going to bleed in different ways. Now, because this is a lower PPI, when you draw a bunch of gray, for example, it looks a little blurry and you can start to see the little individual pixels. So that's a little bit of a downside. Now, that's unfortunate because this is old. This is two and a half years old. This is brand new. This has the highest pixel density of any large screen device. So it falls short in that degree. But the Remarkable just goes nuts with the amount of features. You have layers. You can move the layers up and down. You can delete layers all together you can add a bunch more and you can add a template look at all these templates the Kindle does have templates but not nearly as many as the remarkable does even the templates are easier to understand on the remarkable they're more blown up and they're more indicative of what it's gonna look like whereas on the Amazon it's just a little thumbnail and they're all grayed out so you don't really know what something's gonna look like until you dive into it so that's a little bit of a downside the remarkable also has a bunch of things like selectors and erasers and you have tags and you can look at the overall overview of all the pages you have and you can export to screen share and this is something that Kindle can't do you can do screen share and you can convert to text and send but depending on when you bought this unit it's actually going to be a feature that you're gonna have to pay for in order to use and that was a lot of controversy with the Remarkables that they made you pay a monthly fee, which is a little bit unfortunate. Now, the Amazon doesn't have nearly as many features. You only get a couple line thicknesses. And even if you do choose the pen and go too heavy, you actually don't get a huge disparity between the lightest stroke and the heaviest stroke. The pressure sensitivity is not nearly as robust as the Remarkable is. You can, however, toggle between pens. So you can go highlighter or you can go pencil. And if you press the button, you can actually switch between them on the fly. It's a very nice feature to have. You also have the eraser or you can use the eraser on the back. Now you have something very useless, which is pointer. You can actually tell the unit that the Wacom is supposed to act as your finger. So if I tap the top third, it's going to think my finger did that, which is strange because if I just use my finger, it does the exact same thing. So I'm not sure what the point of that is. You can do redo, undo, and move it to the the right side or the left side but that's it and if you go over here to settings you only get a few more things including the only new thing in the settings which is key mapping you can key map this middle button here to do different things highlighter pen eraser and sticky note if you're wondering what that is it is a new feature so we can X out of this we can go to the top and we can go home to open up an ebook by going to our library we can open up an ebook and if I press and hold that button tap on the screen I actually open up a sticky note which is really cool because now I can write whatever I want on the page and it saves it immediately and I can re refer to these later on anytime I want by clicking the sticky note on the page or going up to the top and looking at my references. So the Amazon is far more basic than the Remarkable is, which is actually a pretty fair matchup I would say because recently the Remarkable has just been getting walked all over by the recent competition. But there's one thing that remains to be tested and that is which one feels more like paper compared to other devices like the Fujitsu, the Sony, plastic devices like the Remarkable 1 and the Mimas, the Remarkable 2 didn't really stack up. However, compared to the Kindle, the Remarkable is noticeably more paper-like than the Amazon. 
The Amazon is more slippery. The Remarkable has far more grit to it than the Kindle does. The Kindle just slips and slides. It doesn't feel like there's all that much actual resistance and it's not a very sandpapery type of feel to it. Whereas the Remarkable has a lot more texture that reverber reverberates and vibrates through your fingertips as you touch the screen. It's a more accurate device than the Kindle is, I feel. The Kindle is just more, has a note-taking capability there as a pleasantry. So if the question is which device is better, you can't really answer that. Which one is the better e-note? The Remarkable by far. Feels more like paper compared to the Kindle and it just has more features. However, which one is the better device overall? The Amazon. Because you get 70% of what the Remarkable has when it comes to the note taking experience, but you get the most robust library of books, the best reading features and all these additional things like web browser, Goodreads, and the ability to listen to audiobooks via Bluetooth. There's so much more you can do on an Amazon Kindle as an ebook reader or a large screen e-reader. But when it comes to the e-note capabilities with screen share and the additional features of converting to text, the Remarkable takes the cake. So it really just comes down to what you want out of a product and we hope this shows you a little bit of an inside look between the Amazon Kindle Scribe and the Remarkable 2. For GoodyReader.com, this is Peter.